around 220 maybe with some roll. All right, welcome everybody. We're gonna uh, take a look at this this swing. I haven't been to the range in, I don't know, maybe a year. It's been at least many months. This is the first time I've been out in a long time. And um, we'll take a look at this swing. I see a lot of really bad habits that, you know, it's tough when you get out in the range for the first time in, in many, many months or over a year. Uh, this is probably the best shot I had and we'll take a look at it here in a second get this thing clicked and get it started. So the ball was hit dead straight right at my target out there, that white flag straight ahead. I might have been left of it like a yard or two, just absolutely nutted it far as direction. Just a little bit left of the target, but oh, let's talk about the, 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 the ugly here. Standing up in the backswing, significantly standing up in the backswing. And then also in the downswing, the hips are moving dramatically towards the ball. I already drew some lines and I took a look at this earlier. So that's the ugly. The ugly is not maintaining spine angle and really just totally losing spine angle in the backswing and swaying off the ball. And all. that's, you know, some really nasty old habits just, you know, for not being at the range and not hitting balls forever in a day. Yep. Just doing half swings here, not taking big swings, just doing little half swings. You know, when you're just getting out to the range for the first time in in better part of a year, you just got to go out there and just take it easy. Don't set any really high expectations because you're going to come home all frustrated and disappointed. So I already told myself, just go out there and enjoy. I got out there really early because, you know, down here in Texas, we, we still have over 100 degree temperatures here in August. So I got out there about uh, about 9 a.m. And I uh, spent about an hour just at the range. And then by about 10, 10 o'clock, I was already in the low 90s. So I was finishing up just maybe high 80s. I was just finishing up just before it started getting really hot and got out of there before, you know, you start just starting to cook and fry. You can see how dry the ground is there. Now let's talk about the good. There are some good things about this swing. And the good thing is I actually started the downswing with the hips. They're going to fire first. So that's really nice. That part's cool. The hips actually do initiate the downswing. Boom, a little separation going on there. I like that. Not everything was bad. Losing the spine angle and doing all that uh, pelvis moving towards the ball, that's all bad and ugly, but but starting the downswing with the hips, actually pretty cool. The club was still going back. The hips initiated the downswing, so there was some positive that came out of this. You can see me just doing little half swings here. I'm not even raising my trail arm really off from the side of my body very much. I was working on trying to stay loose with the wrists. Um, I noticed I was losing losing the angles at the trail elbow and the trail wrist long before I should have. But that has a lot to do with standing up in both in the backswing and in the downswing. When you start standing up, you're going to lose all the angles. So I really just, I wish I had just more time to get to the range or. Or even if I just had the, I don't have the property to, on my own property to go out and hit balls. I don't have enough space to do that. That would be so nice. Then I wouldn't have to be figuring out how to get to the range just to get some practice in. So anyway, life is what it is. You know, you make the best of it. But this shot was actually not a bad shot for a little half swing going on here. Um, I hit the ball probably about uh, 190 in the air. Um, it was a low little zipper here straight away. Beautiful shot. And uh, it rolled out to about 220 because the ground is super dry. So um, I can't complain, you know, for not being out there for probably a year. Um, you know, the swing is pretty ugly as far as um, losing all the spine angle and all that other stuff and losing side bend and all that. Um, but I managed to get just enough wrist, wrist cock. And I managed to get the hips uh, firing first in the downswing to, to make this swing happen. And, uh, you know, it's something to build on. There's a lot of work to be done here. And we'll just we'll just keep working at it. Yeah, the two pauses that did come out of this was I was able to initiate the downswing with my hips rather than just swinging from the top. 
And um, you know what? I was pretty much straight on target here. This thing was nutted. I mean, it was nutted. I mean, maybe a yard or two left of the target at the most. I'll take that all day long. You know, if I was out, I'm, I'm in my late 50s now. I lost a lot of weight in the last couple of years, you know, from the, the pandemic bull crap. And, um, you know, it's it's tough to put weight on as you get older. So that's some work I got to work on. We'll see. Working with a, a really good doctor down in Florida, even though I live in Texas, I'm working with a doctor in Florida that we're working on trying to get my health restored and, you know, we'll see if I can put on 20 or 30 pounds. That would help because when you, I'm super thin here. I mean, you, you should be able to see how skinny I am. When you don't have any mass, it, it's really hard to get generate enough uh, ball speed. You just, it's just really difficult. You need you need some mass, unless you're really really long, you know, young and you've got uh, you know you've got a lot of elasticity. But I'm in my late fifties, and you know the years of elasticity. <laughs> let's just be honest there, they're not going to be there at this age. Uh, but if I was playing from the YTs and just going out there and peppering it out there like this all day long. Um, you know, the, the, uh, old man tees, um, I could probably post a pretty decent score, probably somewhere in the eighties. If I just did this all day long, knock it out there, you know, uh, 200, 220 down the middle of the fairway, uh, and probably just, you know, pepper some hybrids down the, down the middle of the fairway towards the green and, and, and just play my game for what it is at the moment. I'm not going to do that because, you know, I just, you know, I'm not, um, uh, you know, I just don't have the, the uh, I guess, the, the passion, if you will, or the their encouragement or the, you know, I'm not seeing the results I want, you know. I've done all this stuff before in my 30s and 40s. I, I played golf pretty much at this level, got managed to get down to four handicap. So I've already been down this road. I, don't, I really don't want to go repeat the whole thing all over again. You know, I'm looking for improvements and we'll see what happens if I can figure out some way to to schedule some time to get out to the range three or four days a week. You know, I am swinging the club at home, which is, you know, I'm doing trying to do the best I can, but you really need to hit balls because, you know, we want to be evidence-based. You have to see the flight of the ball trajectory. Um, I've got the little behind me. I've got my little um, SC 200 plus. that's keeping, keeping me honest. You let me know what my yardages are. It doesn't do really well with low shots. So it'll kind of miss, It'll misread the yardages for really low shots, but I was hitting some low shots here and it wasn't really doing very good about reading the really low shots, but, but nevertheless, you know, it's still helpful to have it behind you. Like I, you can't see it in this picture in the video here, but it's behind me about four or five feet. <clears throat> really nice to have it directly behind you. And it, it puts out a little audio and you know, you can look at it and tell you the yardage. And of course I always run camera. You always got to run video guys and gals. Otherwise you're just fooling yourselves. Yo, know, how would I know? I was, I, how would I know that I um, that I'm standing up in the swing? You know, both in the backswing and the downswing. You, you're never gonna know. You need video to do that. So I encourage people always run the video. But in any case, I mean, I just you know, getting. I want to finish up this video, but getting back to talk about if I were to go out and play from the white tees, the kind of the old man tees, and went out to the golf course right now. Um, I know that I could probably shoot probably somewhere in the mid to high 80s if I just stayed disciplined. Because even though the yardages stink and, the, and this biomechanics here are not, you know, pretty horrible, um, the fact that I know I can hit the ball down the middle of the fairway, it's huge. And people just don't understand that about golf. You know, you just stepping us away from the uh, the bad biomechanics and everything we're seeing in the swing, um, keeping the ball in the center of the fairway in the short grass, that's huge for scoring. Huge, because I've done it for many years. You can go out there and, and hit a 200 and to 220 drive like I'm doing here in this uh, video here at the range and uh, take your hybrids and put them in or around the green and then you're chipping and one putting probably on a third of the holes. You'll, you'll score in the mid to high 80s doing that. You know, my short game is pretty good even though I haven't been practicing. My short game is usually pretty good. I just have a knack for it. So I usually uh, chip and short pitches and chips and, and bunker play and putting them pretty good at all that naturally. You know, usually people that are not good at long distance uh, are good at their short games, and that's me. So I know I can go out there and shoot probably, like I said, right now today uh, on a fairly sh short course from YTs. Uh, I could probably shoot 90 or below it if I really put my mind to it. So, you know, the one thing I just want to finish up this video with, and I mean, I know what I need to be working on because I can tell just by looking at this video. 
uh, physically, I need to work on getting be- healthier and putting some weight on. Um, it's clear, you know, what my goals are as far as improving on my swing. This video is pretty clear cut about what I need to do. Um, but I also want to just encourage people that, you know, it's really important to keep the ball in the short grass. You know, if you're not a long hitter like me right now and you do want to play golf, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go out to the, to the golf course and play golf with this swing because I've been there, done that. But if, but if you are and you're the type of person usually, then you want to go do that. That's fine. Just remember it's, it's critical to put the ball in the short grass. Don't worry about hitting it 250 or 280 or 300 if you're not doing that right now. Right? That'll come if you put in the work, especially young guys and gals. Okay? That'll come if you put in the work. Uh, but focus on putting the ball in the fairway. That's going to make the game so much more enjoyable. And then I would say, uh, other than that, uh, at least my experiences, if you put in... 65 to 70% of your practice into your short game, you're going to score really well out there. You're going to have a great time. Okay, that's it for me, guys and gals. I just want to share my my really ugly looking swing, getting kind of get, hopefully getting back into the swing of things, and we'll see if I can improve on this and pick up some yardage. Uh, I'm working w- uh, with some Paul Wilson, um, some of his, I don't want to say tips, I guess they're tips. Just some of his methodologies, trying to get really loose wrists here. So I'm going to keep working at it. Hopefully we can get some improvement as we get into the autumn season. Maybe I can pick up some 20, 20 or 30 yards. I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. That's it for now. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Talk to you all real soon again next time.